Okay. Welcome, grade eights, to your explanation of your homework. If you know an answer to a question, just fast forward through to the parts that you need explanation for. And it shan't be too painful. Here we go. Okay, question number one in your sheet says, John flips a coin and rolls a six-sided six die. What does the notation PH3 mean? Well, P, this P right here stands for probability. Probability. And in the brackets, the first term is your first event, in this case, flipping the coin. And it means the probability of heads in the first event. Comma is separating the second event, which is three. Heads in the first and three on the dice. So that's what this means. It means the probability of, of flipping a head and rolling a three. Could you explain how you could use a tree diagram to get that answer? Yes, you could. If you simply put down H and T, that would be a heads and a tails. If it was a heads, you could have a one, two, three, four, five, or six. And if you did a tails, you could have the same events. It could be tails, one, two, three, four, five, or six. So really, what this is saying, and I'll use my highlighter here, if you had a heads on your first one, you might have a heads and then a one. That would mean heads one would be one possible outcome. You could also have heads two, heads three, heads four, heads five, and heads six. So there are six possible outcomes for uh, if you had heads first. And there are six more outcomes. Tails one, tails two, tails three, tails four, tails five, and tails six. So this means that using this tree diagram, if you follow the branch all the way to the end, in this case, if I did, uh, let's just do highlighter again. If I followed the tails and all the way here, that's tails two. That is one potential outcome from that, uh, those two events. Okay, next question. So the spinner is divided into three equal region, regions as shown. Damien flips a coin, Damien and spins the spinner once. Draw a tree diagram to represent the sample space. So for this one, my tree diagram is going to have the coin first, heads and tails, and the spinner second. One, two, and three. Carlos, I'm making a video for YouTube. And you're now on the YouTube video for say, say Olivia, okay. And in the second part, we have tails one, two, and three as well. So that's the tree diagram for A. This is the answer for A. For B, it says list the sample space. <laughs> is that right? So the sample space is going to be all of these different outcomes where the branches of the tree take us. So in this case, our sample space would be heads one is one possible outcome, heads two, heads three, tails one, tails two, and tails three. There are six possible outcomes represented by the uh, tree. So that's our sample space. A sample space is a fancy word for just saying all the possible combinations or possible outcomes. Okay. And what is the probability of heads two? Well, out of all the six possible outcomes, there's only one that's heads two. So you have one out of six, or one, we call it a favorable outcome out of all the six possible outcomes. And this is the fraction that represents that. And fractions can be converted into decimals by division. So one divided by six. So that fraction represented by decimal is zero decimal one six repeating. And therefore as a percent, it's approximately 16.7% or 16 decimal six, 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 six percent. Okay. Question four says the following tree diagram represents the sample space for a probability experiment. What is the sample space for this experiment? So at the end of each branch, I'm not sure why this is here, but anyway, at the end of each branch, we would have TT, that's one possible outcome, spinning a T on the first and spinning a T on the second. Spinning a T, a T on my first spin and a W, and a T on my first spin and an O. I could also have a WT, which is represented right here. WT, WWWO, and finally I can have an OT, 
O on my first spin, W on my second, O on my first spin, O on my second spin. So there are nine possible outcomes. So my sample space is those. The question says, what is the probability of a T and a W? And it does not say in any order. The first T means that it has to be on spin one a T. And the second W means it has to be a W in the second. We only have one that's a TW. So we have one possibility out of nine, which is if you do division to zero, that's about one, 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 one repeating, or approximately 11.1%. What is the probability that both are identical? Well, if you look at our sample space, that's an identical one. That's an identical one, and that's an identical one. So as a fraction, we have three possible outcomes, favorable outcomes that are nine possible, which if you divide three by nine, you get zero decimal three, 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 repeating to infinity, or approximately 33.3% chance of it happening. Question six is, Ali draws a card at random from a set of five cards. Okay, so let's just take this here. So we're going to create a table this time. So I'm going to make a table. Uh, my first event is going to be the dice. So I'm going to put down one, two, three, four, five, and six. That's my first event. My second event is going to be drawing the cards. The three of spades, the four of spades, five of spades, the six of spades, and the seven of spades. Now in here, I'm going to erase this and make it a little bit neater. So inside here, I have all of my, this is my sample space. Inside here are all of the possible combinations that can be attained from spinning or uh, rolling the dice and drawing the card. So I'm going to use a different color. So first event is the dice. So I'm going to put that first one, three, one four, one five, one six, and one seven. That is a, that represents a one on the dice and a seven being drawn from the cards. Then we have two, three, two, four, and I'll pause. And the rest of the table looks like that. So that's our sample space. So if we really look at this, we have uh, 30 different possible outcomes. So our possible outcomes are 30 different combinations. It says what is for B? It says what is the probability that the same number is the outcome on both card and dice. So if we take a different color here, what is this probability the same? There's one that's the same, there's one that's the same, there's one that's the same, and there's one that's the same. There's only four of those that are all the same in those. So that means we have four out of 30, which translates as a decimal, because we have to convert this to a percentage. We want to know four out of 30. Four divided by 30 is 0 decimal 1, 3 repeating, or approximately 13.3. Uh, for the C, it says, what is the probability that the sum, which means addition, sum means addition, the sum of the two numbers is even? So if I look at this one here, the sum of those two, so 1 plus 3, the sum of those is 4, which is an even number, so I'm going to circle it. And I'm going to circle all of the different sums. 1 plus 7 is 8. Those are all of the numbers that add up to be an even sum. So we have actually 15, this is for C, 15 out of the 30 possible combinations, which we all know is about a 50% probability. And the last question, D, says, what is the probability that the number on the die is equal to or larger than the number on the card? So remember, these, this side here is our dice. So the first number in all of our sample space is representing the dice number. So we have to find all of the combinations where that number is larger than the card number. And the first one we see, that or more, the first one we have is actually this one, where the die is a 3 and the card is a 3, or equal to or larger. And the rest of them, all of those ones there, the die roll is larger or equal to the card. So we have actually 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 out of the 30 possibilities, which in lowest terms is 1 out of 3. And everybody knows that that, sorry, is 33.3 .3 repeating percent. 1 out of 3 is a third. Okay, so that's the probability of drawing or of rolling a number that is equal to or larger than the card you draw. Question seven. 
says, Lucy is jigging for fish through the ice. She has an equal chance of catching a white fish, trout, arctic char, or losing the fish. I don't like this question because really that is not a possibility, right? So we have white fish. We're just going to use a W. We'll use T for trout. We'll use AC for arctic char, and we'll use N for none. That's the, we'll call this the second jig, J-I-G. Our first jig is over on this side. It's going to be the same. It's going to be, I have a chance to get a white fish, a trout, an arctic char, or nothing. So when we look at our sample space, the inside there, we know that we have 16 possible combinations. Okay. Now, what is the probability that one of those combinations is a white fish char? Well, a white fish char, I'm going to put my... I'm going to fill in my sample space here. And when I fill in my chart, those are all my possible outcomes. Of those, what is the possibility of whitefish first, then a char? Or in either order, so it could be whitefish char or char whitefish. Well, whitefish char is there. And Arctic and this oh, sorry, and and right here. So we have two possibilities out of 16, which in lowest terms is one out of eight which I know as a percent is 12.5% chance. What is the possibility of char-char? Char-char binks. Char-char is only found right here, arctic char, arctic char. So that is one chance out of 16, which is half 12.5%, would be 6 decimal 25%, if you don't believe me. We do 1 divided by 16, and we get 6.25%. So 6.25%. Or 0 0.0625 as a decimal, or 1 out of 16 as a fraction. All three of those are correct. And what is the probability she will catch nothing at all? Nothing, nothing is the same possibility as catching char char because it's only one chance out of 16, which is all of the same percentages as above. Question 9 says two babies were born today construct a table to show the possible genders for the two babies now obviously this is not including um androgynous or non-gendered children i suppose if it is simply you're either going to be a boy or a girl in this particular question and so we have what is the probability that there's one boy one girl we have bb bg gb and gg so what's the probability there's one boy, one girl? Well, we have one here and one here, which means there is two chances out of four, or there's a 50% chance you will have one of each gender. What assumption did you make about the likelihood of a boy or a girl being born? Uh, you're making the assumption that um, there is equal chance that there is uh, of being a boy or, or being a girl. There's no genetic uh, influences on being born a girl or being born a boy especially with dna there might be more of a uh, a chance that that would happen depending on your uh, genetic makeup question 12 it says a spinner is, is divided into four equal regions the spinner is spun three times it says draw a tree diagram so we're going to go uh t is it t-n-e-e -E? is that what it is yeah T N E E. All right, this is what your tree diagram is going to look like at the end of it. And I apologize because this tree diagram is incredibly cumbersome and should never be done by anybody ever again in the history of time. So, what we have here, if we look at each branch, I'm going to just take my highlighter. I'm going to highlight one branch. I'm going to highlight this branch right here. All right. That's one branch. That's an N on the first spin, a T on the second spin, and a T on the third spin. That's one possible outcome. I'm going to take a different one. I'll just randomly choose this one over here. And I'll go this way and then this one here. That's an E on the first, an E on the second, and an E on the third. So if we look at the end of the branches, we have four here. We're supposed to have four here four here four here and four here so each of these t's have four times four which is 16 here there's 16 here there's 16 here and there's 16 here that means there's 64 possible outcomes in this entire massive ugly tree forest so 
that's how many different possible outcomes there are. In terms of our, um, what is the probability of an EEE? Well, we have one here. We have another one right here as well. So if you look at the EEE here, there's another EEE here, and there's another EEE here, and another EEE here. So there's four here, and there's four here. There's eight parts out of 64. Eight parts out of 64 in lowest terms is one out of eight, which is 12.5%. And the rest of it, if you didn't do it, don't worry about it, because I'm not going to correct it tomorrow. That one's fine. We'll leave it alone. It's a bizarre question. And your last question is your uh, difficult question. It says, Elena rolls two standard six-sided dice. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a table. Okay, so I'm going to put down, uh, I'm going to fill in this table. So when you create your table, you're going to have the first event here, and your, excuse me, second event here. It says, what is the probability that the difference between the two numbers is two? So if I fill in my... Um, my sample space. If I look at this board, if I circle a 1 and a 3, the difference between 1 and 3 is 2. There's 2 between there. Actually, it's actually 1 and 3 is, we can think of it as negative 2, 2, but the difference, the absolute value difference between those two is 2. And the difference between 2 and 4 is 2. The difference between 3 and 1 is 2. The difference between 3 and 5 is 2. The difference between 4 and 2 is 2. The difference between 4 and 6 is 2. The difference between, uh, where are we at here? Uh, 5 and 3. And 6 and 4. All of those numbers there have differences of 2. So we have 4, 8, 8 out of 36 possible combinations. 8 out of 36 have a difference of 2. I'm going to take my calculator. 8 divided by 36 is an easy one. It's 0 decimal 2 repeating. So you have a 22.2% likelihood, 8 out of 36, that you will have um, a difference of 2. What is the probability that the sum will be 3? So I'll choose a green marker this time. The sum of the two numbers means add them together. That's 3. That's 3. And those are the only ones where you add them together that you will have a sum of exactly three. So there's only two numbers out of 36 that will have a sum of exactly, oh, sorry, not, oh, I read it wrong, a multiple of three. Uh-oh. So I have to have multiples of three. I've read that wrong. So your multiples have to be three, six, nine, 12, 15. I think we can stop there because uh, a multiple of three. Those are the multiples we need. So anything that has a 3 or 6. So that's 3. That's a 6. That's a 6. Uh, that's a 9. That's a 6. Uh, that's a 6. That's a 9. That's a 9. That's a 6. And that's a 9. And finally, that's a 12. Because 12 is a multiple of 3. So everything that's circled green is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12 out of the 36 combinations are uh, multiples of 3, which is in lowest terms 1 third, which is 33.3% uh, that you will have a multiple of 3. And the last one. <laughs> and the last one says, what is the probability that the product is a product of 4? So for 4, we have 4. We have uh, a multiple of 4, 4, 8, 12, and 16. Uh, we have 20, 24. We have 28, 32, and finally 36. And I know 36 is my largest multiple because there it is there. That's a multiple of 4. 4, 4 8, 12, 16, 20, 24, 28, 32, and 36. So I'm just going to multiply all the numbers that multiply to give me one of those two numbers. So 1 times 4 is 4, which is a multiple. Uh, 2 times 4 is 8. 2 times 6 is 12. 2 times 2 is 4. Uh, what else do we have here? 12. We have 15, 18. Nope. There's a 4. There's an 8. These are all multiples. Uh, then we have... 
5 times 3 is 15, 20. And 12, 24, and that. So those are all of the different ones that multiply to give you uh, multiples of 4. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Is that right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 15 out of 36, which as a decimal is 41.6% roughly. 41.6 repeating percent or roughly 41.7%. Okay, hopefully that helped you. If you didn't get it, make sure you copy down the answers and tomorrow we'll correct them again if you need any help.